Battlefield Massacre. Oh, I remember that. Oh, now we have something to talk about. Um, school shootings were not a big thing back then. It kind of started with Columbine. And then Germany had its first major school shooting that was big in the media and was a big, big thing in Germany. This is like two hours away from me. Where Robert Steinhäuser was his name. Uh, did a massacre in, in a German school. And I remember the story that in the end he locked himself in a room. And one of his teachers, an old man, was knocking at the door. Let me in, let me in. And the guy, Robert Steinhäuser, didn't shoot him. And he just said, like, leave me alone or something. Or just chill. And then he shot himself. And yeah, that was the, base, the big first um, school shooting. The interesting thing is that Tommy K uh, has a little connection to the school shooting. I, I told you guys this many times. Okay, the guy shot a bunch of kids. And now I'm wasting 12 billion. Who, who the fuck gives 12 billion to family? Long story short. Oh, man, this is a big story. I don't want to go too deep. I was once suspected by the state of Sex and Altina that I am a school shooter. Like they thought in real life, I'm going to be a school shooter, which was never the truth. And uh, there was a lot of things happening. A lot of police people talked to me because they thought I'm going to be a school shooter. I was always a weird kid. I was like nerdy and weird, you know, like, you know what I mean? You probably were the same. And one day, I will never forget, man. I thought this was the craziest story, man. Um, I had this teacher. She was an ethics teacher. Frau Gräser was her name. And she was genuinely mentally retarded. Uh, later, she had to withdraw as a teacher because she was a bit fucked in the head. She was literally a bit mentally ill. No fucking joke. And I was an edgy kid. And when I was an edgy kid, there was, back in Germany, there was a catalog called the EMP catalog. It was a big catalog that came once per month. It had band shirts. It had uh, Slipknot t-shirts, Linkin Park bags, etc. And there was a t-shirt in that uh, catalog that I liked very much where Quentin Tarantino has a gun to his head and it says there's so many assholes but not enough bullets and we were kids i was like 14 i must have been 14 and um we were fucking weird kids so before class before any class before the teacher came in we would always draw dumb shit on the on the chalk on the on the table the chalk board right we'd always just do dumb stuff and i was just i was an edgy teenager right you know it's nothing crazy so i put on the uh, on the on the cupboard i put there's so many assholes and not enough guns. And this was right after this attack you just saw in the game. It was right after this guy killed people in the airport. So what happened is, I'm going to the next class, right? Blah, blah, blah. We're just chilling. Suddenly, I will never forget this. I will never forget this. So I'm sitting in the class and suddenly someone comes in from a different class and says, Tom, you're supposed to come back to the ethics room. And I'm walking outside and like in a the movie, there's a long hallway and left and right are standing dozens of kids. The whole school is standing there. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I and I'm walking like in a movie, like a walk of shame. I'm walking back to the ethics room and left and right is all these kids, right? All these people, man. Like, what the fuck? I walk into the ethics room and the teacher, Frau Gräser, Mrs. Gräser, who was genuinely, I swear to God, she was literally mentally impaired a bit. I swear to God. She had a big, big camera and she took pictures of my painting, right? And other kids did real paintings too, but my painting was like crazy. And she took pictures. And she called the police and she called uh, the local newspaper. I was in the newspaper the next day that there was a weird thing. And like, what the fuck? So that day I was suspended from school. I was supposed to go home. They sent me home, right? These idiots. If I was a real school shooter, fucking don't send me home, right? I, I said nothing to my mom. I said nothing to my mom. Next day, I'll never forget. In the morning, 8 a.m., we have uh, art class. Two hours of art class. I'm sitting in art class and the uh, deputy boss of the school comes in i forgot his name he was cool though he looked like george clooney and he said uh mr castle come with me uh and the whole class is like oh man this guy's trying to shoot i'm like what the fuck i'm not trying to shoot nobody you fucking weirdos it's just a shirt okay you weird fucks so i walk with the deputy um guy i'll never forget this man never forget this and I think some of you guys understand that. I was very bullied in school and I would sit sometimes in class and I would like fantasize or oh, what if I will pay back my bullies, but I would never, I swear I would never have done anything. I'm pretty sure about, but I fantasized about this 100% when I was 14 because I was bullied very hard. I fantasized about fucking up my bullies. I went into the, 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 the what is that shit called? Where the boss of the school is. I went to this big room, right? And I'll never forget, there's a big table and there's all these officials. The fucking boss of Halle police, policemen, my class teacher, the, the, the boss of the school. They invited everyone, uh, principal, yeah. Everyone was on the table, except my parents. They never told my parents these fucks. My mom never knew this. I never knew nothing about this, these fucking retards, man. So I'm this little kid, I'm scared to death. I'm like, holy shit, what's going on here? I swear to God, in my head, I'm, I'm normal, right? I'm not gonna do shit, you know? It's just a t-shirt, right? 
and I'm sitting. This is right after the attack in Airfall that just happened. That's why they're so scared. And I'm sitting. I must have been 13 or 14 at this point. And I'm sitting on this table. And luckily, I had a very good teacher. My main teacher was Frau Kruse, Mrs. Kruse. She was a very nice lady. And she was like, Tommy, man, we got this. Don't worry. And I was alone. I was exposed. I had no one to defend me. And the police is there. And they're like, uh, Mr. K, we just want to talk to you. And like, what the fuck is up? You know. We don't want no school shootings like it happened in Erfurt. I'll never forget. He said, we don't want school shootings here like in Erfurt. I'm like, what? Okay, nice, cool. I'm just chilling. And they're asking me all these questions. Uh, does your dad uh, have guns? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what the fuck? Dude, I'm just like to play Elder Scrolls Oblivion. You fucking, what the fuck? And they fucking destroyed me. I was, I was like a kid. I was like, yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then I, I don't remember what happened afterwards, but they released me. <laughs> and I just had a normal life again. But I remember the police guy would often visit the school and ask about me. True story, man. And I'm like, what the fuck? Bro, I ain't fucking killing nobody. And they thought I'm like a school shooter. What the fuck, man? And they handled it so wrong. They never gave me any help. They never gave me, like... Imagine I'm a real school shooter. They would have given me treatment. Talked to a psychiatrist. They never told my parents. I swear, years later, I tell the story to my mother. She's like, What? What happened? They didn't no tell nothing to my mom. And they handled it so fucking bad, bro. It's just, what the fuck, man, dude. And that is my school shooter story. Twitch Prime. Twitch Prime. And all of that because of a fucking t-shirt from Quentin Tarantino and that teacher being fucking insane, man. And then all the, suddenly the bullies, the bullies were very quiet all of a sudden, you know? My bullies were suddenly like, hey, Tommy, what's up? I always liked you, man. I always liked you, Tommy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> You want more stories? My favorite story ever. My favorite story ever. Uh, I told the story many times. Let's tell a little story, man. I, I, it's the funniest story of my life. I love that story to death. So my entire childhood, I was uh, kind of a weirdo military guy. Like I was one of these kids. Me and my boys, me and my... I had like a group of four to eight people. And we liked military stuff. We And we collected a lot of soft air guns. This was the biggest website of my life. This is a website where you buy soft air guns. Which I did my entire childhood. I will save money for months so I can buy a gun here. Um, soft air? No, no, wait, wait, wait. Soft air, soft air weapons. Yeah. I, and I wasn't allowed to buy 18 years old because you had to use an ID. And I would literally, I remember, I would, uh, I would annoy my dad so much that he put his ID in so I can buy an 18 plus weapon. So me and my boys, this is our entire childhood right here. We will buy these guns and I would have to save money all the time. We had like this abandoned factory where we'll be, we will play war, right? Which is kind of a normal childhood, in my opinion, for a boy. We were just really into guns. And later on, it happened that we started buying gear. Black ski masks, uh, Kevlar vests, gloves. We started looking like real people, right? We started like looking special forces, man. You know, me and my boys started to dress up a bit like this. Yeah, we started to look like this a bit, right? With like 15 years old. And I will never forget, never forget, man. And I showed this many times. This is where I live. I live in this block, right? And me and the boys, we would always meet up here. And with our guns and shit. And we would play war. And we had two scenarios. Number one, Vietnam. This is an abandoned little forest. And it's very small. You look, you see? It's like five minutes to walk from here to here. And we had uh, our urban war. An abandoned factory. Right? All these holes was us. Like this right here was us uh, falling through holes. And uh, this was our my childhood. Which I really enjoyed. I think I had a good childhood. I enjoyed it. And we would play war all the time. Bam, 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 bam. One day, I'll never forget. We're like six people and we play three on three on this map, right? One team starts here, one team starts here, and we're fighting in the Vietnam map. Back in the day, there was much less trees. And what happens is, I remember, me and my friend Christian, me and my friend Christian, there's like a lot of hills here. We're crawling up the hills, very, we're a stealthing, we're stealthing, and we're fucking special forces, man. And I think this is perfect, yeah. Uh, I think we're like stealthing up here. It's hard to explain, it all got a bit changed nowadays. We're stealthing up here, and we're stealthing and stealthing. And suddenly there's a little a little valley, like a 10 square meter valley, a little valley in the ground. So we're stealthing up. Uh, thank you, uh, good guy Penguin. And as I'm not lying, man, this is a real story. I'm not making this up. So we're coming up, right? And suddenly we're, 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 we're looking up and we're seeing this little hole in the ground, right? And we find a fucking wheat plantation. A legit fucking professional made wheat plantation. Dozens of plants, fucking weed, man. Like a far cry dude. A fucking weed plantation hidden behind like, trees and stuff and like put in the ground. Professional shit, right? And we're like, and again, we're like 15. We're fucking kids. We're like, okay. So we're like, boys, boys, stop the fighting. And it's like, we take 10 minutes and the boys are coming over, right? 
And there was a hill. It was up a hill. It was up a hill. So we're standing around the weed, right? And uh, this is the funniest shit ever, man. Oh, God. It's so cool. And I always think it was my neighbor. Anyway, so we're standing around the reed plant. And you have to imagine, there are six guys in full gear. Fucking M4s, black ski masks, everything. And we're standing around the weed. And I will never forget this. We're standing right here. And we can see this is a high ground. And we can see all of this. We can look down. And, I, I, and we're talking about, should we call the police? What should we do? We had like this weird kid, Mike. He was like into weed. He's like, bro, we can make a lot of money from this. Like, what? What the fuck? We can't sell weed. We're 15. <laughs> and I'm sitting right here. And I'm looking down here. I'll never forget. I look down here. And right here, this path, comes a guy. Like, in his 40s, a bit fat. And a lot of bags. A shit ton of bags, right? And there's nothing here. People don't walk here. He's going somewhere. So we're looking. And he's coming, right? And I will never forget. And this, I'll never forget. So this guy, he walks like this. And suddenly he does this. And he looks up the hill. And he sees six guys in full gear. Full tactical gear. And he goes like this. <laughs> it just turns around, bro. And I'm like, you think that guy's involved with this thing? You think he's involved? And he's just like, la la la. He's just like walking very fast away. And we're like, what the fuck happened here, man? And I've always been thinking till this day, that guy must have been scared to oblivion. That guy must have went home and be like, oh, holy shit, my phone is tapped. I have the fucking special forces Navy shields on my ass. We didn't do shit. We didn't call the cops. We didn't do anything, man. We, we just abandoned that thing, right? And that I, I always wonder what he must have felt that day. He was walking this way. And I sometimes think he was my neighbor. I, I lived right here and there was a fat guy living right here. And I, I, I wish that, that was him. He looked like the same. And bro, that... <laughs> Dude, imagine the guy. You look upstairs and see these these kids, bro. Oh, man. Another great story, huh? You like the stories? Great story, man.